Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic for the second puzzle of today. And um, this is an empty window Sudoku and I'll explain the rules in a moment. Uh, first, just to mention that we have um, published on Patreon today the reward puzzle being solved. So if you're a $3 Patreon or above, um, you can go to Patreon and see the solution to the Queen Sudoku that we published um, earlier in the month as the reward for patrons. Now, back to this puzzle, which is from Philip Huber, who we have featured a couple of times before on the channel, and he's come up with this and sent it to us. Now, empty window does not mean this is like Windoku, which is a kind of extra region Sudoku, although actually there is an extra region in this Sudoku, and it's the grey cells, which are the centre of each 3x3 three three box. They are the numbers 1 to 9 in some order. Um, other than that, we have some killer cages, which we've marked blue as well, and some letters in the grid, which represent the number in their cell, and some formulas, which you can see below the grid. So A equals B times X, C equals D times X, E equals F plus X, H equals G plus X, and J equals A plus B. Now X is to be determined. Um, we don't know if any of these numbers are the same as each other or not, but we do know that we're probably going to have to solve them to solve this puzzle. So have a go if you want on the link under the video, um, and I'm going to try it now. So feel free to come back to me if you've had a go. Let's get cracking. So they're all two cell killer cages, and we do get a couple that are just given to us, or rather not given to us, but we know which digits are in a 17 cage. They must be 9 and 8, and 16 must be 9 and 7. We've got a whole arch of 15s around there, but that's not telling us much. Um, so let's look at the equations. A equals B times X. That is significant for this reason. Remember, A and B are both grey cells, so they can't be the same. They have to be from the set 1 to 9. So that means that X can't be 1, which is good to know. So X is... Can X be 0? No. No, it can't, because E and F are in the same box, and they are different by X. So it can't be 0. So X isn't 0 or 1. Um, and it's got to be a positive integer. Yeah, it has to be. So it's going to be, I suppose B could be, oh, B could be 1, couldn't it? So it could be any positive integer apart from 1. If it was 2 or 3 or 4, that would really limit B and A, especially as J, another of these cells, is the sum of A and B. So if B, if, if B couldn't be 1, those would be a number and their factor. J is in the same row as 9 and 8. So unless B is 1, don't they have to be 4 and 2 and J 6? And that's not possible, actually. Let me just pencil those in. What I'm suggesting is that if B was 2, the only thing, that's kind of the next lowest number that's not 1. A would have to be 4. Remember that J is the sum of A and B, but is less than 8. So J would have to be 6. This is the only way it could work. Once B is 3, A is going too high. So, and this doesn't work because of this cage, which now can't, it adds up to 11. It can't have 9 or 8, so it can't be 9, 2 or 8, 3. With 4 and 6 there, it can't be 6, 5 or 4, 7. That doesn't leave any possibilities. So, B can be no higher than 1, and is 1. So get a number in the grid. Now what does that mean? That means that, that, means that A is X. So whatever number A is, is X. And it's not 9, 8, or 7. 
which is unsurprising, but at least it is lower than those. It can't be one because that's on the extra region. And J is one more than whatever this is. So, well, I mean, it could be two, three, four, five, or six, and J would be three, four, five, six, or seven. Now, C equals D times, ah, oh, C equals D times X, but remember, X is A. So C equals these two boxes multiplied together. I suppose D could be one, which is annoying as well. But it is possible. If D couldn't be one, then it would have to be a multiplication of two and three or two and four. And C would be restricted to six or eight. In fact, I think D can't be any higher than three. Maybe it could be four, just. With A being two, yeah. C is those two multiplied together. So unfortunately, because it could be one in D, it could be any of those possibilities. Can't be nine, because that would be three times three, and that's not, a, they're, they're separate numbers in the same box. Oh, so this 11 cage with nine, eight gone, this is either seven, four or six, five. Um, this can't be one, so one's got to be on the outside there somewhere, but I don't really want to pencil mark that because could end up, end up in confusion. 15, 12. I'd like to limit J down, maybe based on this box. Yes, H is G plus X. But we just don't know what X is. H has to be 9, 8, 7, or 6 to be in this 15 cage um, with a 9, 8, 7, or 6 below it. But G, all we know is it has to be less than that by one of these numbers. So it can't be higher than 7. But that's not really limiting it much. If that was 9, 6, this would be... Oh! These are mostly big numbers. Okay, I'm going to try something here just to see, it's the sort of thing that someone like Philip might have done. Now look, if you look at these three columns and these three rows, rows two, five, and eight, columns two, five, and eight, they've got to be 45 lots of six minus the intersections, which are the set of gray cells that add up to 45. So that must be five lots of 45. So we're looking at um, 225. Now, if I take whatever the sum of all of the blue cells effectively is off 225, then I'll get the sum of these cells on the outsides of those columns. And it would be very interesting and probably deliberate if that was limited in any way. So 15, 26, and 30 is 56, 65, 75, 82, 93, 104, 116, 132, 145, 156. I'm not counting that one. 156. Let's just check that again because I want to get it right. 45, 56, 65, 75, 82, 93, 104, 116, 132, 145, 156 is the sum of all the blue cells. 156, that's what I just said. Now I'm taking that off 225, 45 times five, yeah. And that leaves me with 44 and 25, 69. That's not that helpful. One, if they were all 24, 9, 8, and 7. Ooh, that is close. Let me do this maths again. 
15, 26, 41, 56, 65, 75, 82, 93, 104, 115, 127, 140, 156. Okay, take that away from six lots of 45 it is 270. And that leaves 114. Ah, but that 114 includes these gray cells twice. Because they're being counted both across and down. You take off 45 and 45, which is 90 from 114, you get 24. And that is very, very deliberately 1, 2, and 3 in all of those cells. Obviously, each perimeter row or column, those yellow cells can't add up to more than 6. And that's exactly what they do add up to because of the way Philip has constructed this. So I should probably have started with testing that sum out. You do sometimes need to test a few sums out in a killer Sudoku, but you don't often have to test out anything quite that complex. But there we go. This time, that is what's happening. Now, I know that in this 3x3 three three arrangement, yeah, look, we can only have one of 1, 2, and 3 in each row and column of this. It's not a magic square, but it is a square. So we've used the one out of one, two, and three in the bottom row. And the same's got to apply to the columns. So they've all got to be offset. They're either going to be sitting in those three cells or in those three cells. And, yes, and we know, yeah, we know that J is A plus one. And one of them has to be in the set one, two, three, and the other has not to be in it. So that must be three there and four here. And the two, now it can't be in column eight or column five or row eight or row five, so it's here. So we can remove a whole bunch of twos from the outer cells and threes from these ones. And now all of those outer cells are reduced to pairs. It's very clever. I mean, it's fiendishly convoluted, but that's a very clever way of going about this. I mean, maybe I should I should probably have done that before I reached the conclusion that B was one, but I'm glad I've done it now because I suspect that's a major shortcut in this puzzle. Now that can't be four seven because of this four. We get a seven in the central cell. That makes this a six nine fifteen cage. This is now an 8, 4, 12 cage. Now, E is F plus 3. We now know X is 3, so that is 1 or 5. C is 3 times D, so it could still be 1, 2, or 3. No, it can't be 3 because there's already a 3 in the box, so actually we get a 1, 2 pair there. And C is now 3 or 6. Um, what about H and G? G is 3 less than H, so it is 3, 4, 5, or 6. And that's all of the equations used. Right. Although I'm mean, still to resolve three of them, but gives us a start. Now, in this column, we're only missing one number if we allow for the pairs, so that's a 5. So now we know that the 11 is 4 and 7, because 1, 2, 3, and 5 have been used up in the row. That's 6 and 9. This is 8. Um, this must be 4 and 5. We get 6 here, and we complete the grey extra region with a 9 there. That takes 9, 6 out of that. This is a 6, 5 pair. It's all working beautifully. We must be able to resolve these. That's 8, 5, and this is 4, 7. My goodness. Okay, so the whole frame of the puzzle is in place now. Now it's kind of mostly just regular Sudoku, but I don't think it's going to be easy. Where do we go? Ah, oh, look, look at this central cage. Where is 2 going to go in that? It's not in any of these pairs in those seven cells, so it must be 
in one of those, and those are looking there. So D is a one, so C is three. That's a two, that's a one, and that resolves everything around the edges. Fantastic. All of these pairs around the edges are absolutely givens now. That's one, that's two, that's three, just ordinary elimination, and they're all done. Um, so this is one, it's the only place it can go in the central box. That puts one here. I think I'll be able to complete all the ones, twos and threes now, won't I? Oh, maybe not, I can't. Yes, I can. Two there and there is ruling out those. The other two is ruling out that. Hmm, maybe, yeah, two's got to be here, hasn't it, because of that two. So two is there and not there. Through, if I've done all the twos now, I've got one more left to do there. They always seem to go in these empty windows. Maybe that's the point of them. Is that going to be three? Yes, it is. Three is ruled out of those. Um, that's going to be the other three. And one more down here is there. And look, within those empty windows, every single one of them has a different one, two, three pattern which is very neat. And I mean, that's effectively a corollary of the shape of puzzle we've got. So now this is seven or eight. G is therefore four or five. That's giving us a pair. Um, so one of these is seven or eight and the other is six or nine, which means we have a six, seven, eight, nine quadruple here we can put in four and five as a pair at the top. That makes this a four. I think that's reasonable, yeah. In fact, yes, so does the fact that there's a four, five pair there stops this one being a four. So we've got six, nine pair up here, eight, seven pair at the top here. Are there any of those forming new pairs looking down? No, not obviously. Um, ah, we've got F, so we must be able to do E, which is F plus X, so E is 4 there. Excellent. Um, oh, I thought that was going to deal. Yes, look, that 8 sees this. 5, 8 there, that sees that 9, 8 pair. That 9 sees the 6, 9 pair at the top. That 9 also sees 7, 9 there. This is six or nine, because it can't be five, so the only place for a five in the middle box is there. And that's sorting out most of our other pairs. Still can't do that pair down there. Five and six, yes, that's resolved by this six. Seven and eight, six and nine here is resolved by the six in box two already. Ooh. Oh, can't resolve H or G yet. That's irritating. Now, this can't be 6, 9 anymore. So the 7, 8 pair is there. Um, this must be 6 or 9. So 9 is in one of these cells. 6, 9, three, 1, 2. That is 4 or 7. So we've got a 4, 7 pair there. We get a 6, 9 pair at the bottom which we could have found in other ways. One of those is eight. That's not that helpful. Ooh, what am I, this looks like, uh, that's four or five for the column, which gives us a four or five pair in the row as well. That can't be nine, so it must be seven or eight, and that does give us a nine. Um, oops, I'm in the wrong mode at the end of the column there. So this is seven or eight and it's not seven. So that is going to disambiguate our remaining blue cells. Now that feeds into the last equation. H equals G plus X. So G is five. X, remember, turned out to be three. Same as A. Now, 
Has that sorted everything out? Yes, this is resolved. Six, this is resolved. Seven, that does sort out the last blue cage. Seven and five to go in the row. Six and nine to go in this row. Yep, that's done. That is the last one. I think we're finishing off suddenly now. Six and nine. That's a very clever puzzle, but it's a very hard step through. I think there might be another way through it. I mean, I'd got as close as that one, and I felt I could narrow A down. You know, in a competition, I might have looked to bifurcate on the A, but that was a very neat trick. And I mean, it had to be deliberate, given that all these two ones, threes turned up in the outside position. So, very clever from Philip, and uh, well done if you saw that quicker than I did, which is quite possible. Uh, well done if you saw it at all, and I'd be interested to know if you managed to get through this without seeing that trick. That would not amaze me, but I'd be quite impressed. So thank you very much for following that through with me. hope you enjoyed it. A uh, lovely puzzle. Hope to see you again soon on Cracking the Cryptic for more fascinating Sudoku. Bye now.